The world's largest contract chipmaker has opened a new international research center to try and ensure its position as an industry leader. The chief officers of a ship that sank off Kaohsiung last week are to be barred from leaving Taiwan. The climate crisis worsens as the world records its hottest month ever. Plus... And that's game. We're here at the Comics Exhibition in Taipei, where people are enjoying all things anime and manga. A warm welcome to Town Plus News. I'm Leslie Liao. The world's largest contract chipmaker TSMC has opened a new global R&D center in Taiwan's semiconductor hub, Xinzhou City. It's yet another sign of the company's determination to invest locally. Joyce Tseng is at the new site. TSMC is marking yet another milestone. The Taiwanese chip giant is unveiling a brand new global research and development center here in Taiwan's tech hub Xinzhou in northern Taiwan. Now it's already the world's largest contract chip maker, but this new site is set to give TSMC yet another advantage in an industry race to make the most advanced chips. The chip giant's top executives are here, including CEO CC Wei and Chairman Mark Liu, as well as government leaders like Taiwan's Premier Chen Jianren. But arguably today's VIP was TSMC's founder, Morris Zhang, who recently turned 92. Many consider him the father of Taiwan's semiconductor industry. The new center is expected to house over 7,000 new staffers, and its floor space is about 42 soccer fields in size. The center will be carrying out development projects to keep TSMC ahead of its competitors. In TSMC chair Mark Leo's speech, he reminisced about the company's breakthrough 90 nanometer chip back in 2004. And now, almost 20 years later, they're on to developing the 2 nanometer chip, an achievement that he says he's particularly proud of. TSMC has long held a global advantage in making chips, which has helped Taiwan maintain the largest market share in the manufacturing or foundry industry. But now TSMC is expecting a drop in its sales this year. And it recently also announced that its highly anticipated plant in Arizona in the U.S. will be delayed due to a labor shortage. But at least here in Taiwan, where TSMC is headquartered, it has only shown confidence and promise in its ability to make faster and even smaller advanced chips that are in high demand by the world's biggest tech companies. Hao Zhang and Joyce Zhen in Xinzhou City for Taiwan Plus. The U.S. Senate has passed its version of an annual defense bill that has several provisions on Taiwan. The National Defense Authorization Act sets aside a budget of 886 billion U.S. dollars for the U.S. military in 2024. More than 120 amendments were adopted for the bill, which received bipartisan support. Among the new items, several call for increased cooperation between the U.S. and Taiwan militaries. That includes a proposed training and capacity building program to help Taiwan boost its asymmetric defense capabilities. The U.S. is expected to announce more than 300 million U.S. dollars worth of military aid to Taiwan as early as Friday. That's according to a report by Reuters. Four sources close to the deal reportedly say the package could include four reconnaissance drones. The deal is part of a presidential drawdown authority which allocates 1 billion U.S. dollars for aid to Taiwan. But Taiwan is still waiting on a delayed $19 billion worth of weapons and equipment from the United States. Taiwan's largest annual military drills, the Hanguang Exercises, wrapped up on Friday. Most notable were the country's coastal defense drills and its first ever airport repel drill at Taoyuan Airport. But are there any areas the country needs to improve on? Well, for more, our reporter Jaime Ocon spoke to Blake Herzinger, a security analyst from the United States Studies Center. Now that Taiwan's Hanguang military exercises have wrapped up, is there anything that the military missed or anything that needs to be improved overall? Yeah, you know, that's a great question. Uh, Taiwan's military 
while it is capable and you know increasing its acquisitions of high-end platforms we're still looking for kind of a bit more urgency from the taiwanese military a bit more recognition recognition excuse me that um large high dollar platforms aren't probably the way forward for a very small island to defend itself against you know one of the largest militaries and most capable militaries in the world uh, we're still looking for that change in thinking that pervades the entire force moving toward a more attritable uh, more decentralized you know l large numbers of small things that they can afford to lose that spares their people uh, that's the kind of thing that we're missing i think in taiwan still from that mix uh, we're, we're seeing you know combat capability we're seeing the ability to uh, operate in a combined fashion or in a joint fashion across services but what we are missing is this recognition that the quantitative and qualitative edge is gone weather played a huge factor in this year's drills with typhoon doksuri coming up from the south what does this mean for the military in the sense that it didn't get a chance to conduct certain types of exercises? I think one of the things that the, the typhoon highlights is that this is a region that is often dominated by weather. Uh, there is a very small window every year where we assume that the, the PRC could even attempt an invasion of Taiwan due to uh, weather issues, sea states and, and the like. So the interruption of this exercise for weather is a representation of, of real world limitations. Now, of course, if the PRC undertook an invasion of Taiwan, you can't just call it off for weather. But, you know, calling off an exercise to avoid damage and loss is one thing. But in the midst of an invasion, it highlights the fact that people will, people will be lost. Aircraft, ships will be lost due to bad weather, high seas, and things like that. Uh, and so really, this is a, a very real world uh, factor that played into the exercise in a way that I think is, is useful for both sides to examine. And what is the biggest advantage of training in public areas and, and what makes Hangguang so different? It's the fact that they were able to shut down an airport for an air exercise to defend an airport uh, is important. You know, they didn't just go to an empty field somewhere. They practiced where they would fight, uh, which is, uh, you know, something that a lot of countries do not do. Now, there is a degree of, of scriptedness around these exercises, and part of that may be to do with, you know, employing conscript forces, which may not be as uh, com uh, capable of complex operations. Um, and some of it may just be, you know, the nature of the exercise. There's always a degree of scriptedness to any activity, and, and really the sophistication of each military will differ. Now, how that translates to combat is the fact that once combat begins, most of your plans will go out the window. You know, the planning is the part that is useful, not the plan itself, because really, uh, kind of the old adage that no plan survives first contact with the enemy is very true. If we look at, you know, for instance, uh, Russia's uh, invasion of Ukraine, the plans on both sides have clearly been scrapped. Both sides undertook operations thinking they would go one way and they've clearly gone another. It would be the same for Taiwan. That was Blake Herzinger, a security analyst from the United States Study Center, speaking to our reporter Jaime Ocon. The chief officer of a ship that sunk last week off Taiwan's southern coast is being barred from leaving the country. That's as local prosecutors investigate possible violations of the law. Meanwhile, work to clean up thousands of containers and an oil spill is on hold due to Typhoon Doksuri. John Van Trieste has the latest. Off the southern city of Kaohsiung, over a thousand shipping containers remain lost at sea. They fell overboard or sank when the Palau-flagged ship, the Angel, went down near the city's harbor last Friday. In the surrounding waters, over 500 metric tons of oil from the wreck has leaked out, covering at least two square kilometers of the Taiwan Strait. Cleanup and recovery has stalled as the last of Typhoon Doksuri moves on, but officials are now seeking accountability for the mess. The Kaohsiung District Prosecutor's Office is looking at whether the crew broke laws on marine pollution. And Ocean Affairs Minister Guan Bi Ling posted on Facebook Thursday that she's filing to have the captain, first officer, and first engineer barred from leaving Taiwan until the ship's owner pays cleanup costs and compensation. This is legal if there's a concern foreign companies that pollute Taiwanese waters won't pay up. A week after the sinking, the environmental and legal fallout are just beginning to be felt. Kama Xu and John Van Trieste for Taiwan Plus.
Climate scientists expect that July will be the hottest month on record with heat waves spread across much of the northern hemisphere. With these record temperatures, the UN Secretary General says the age of global warming has given way to a new era of global boiling. Once again, John Van Trieste has more. A fiery month is coming to a close. Climate scientists say this July could be the hottest ever recorded. With El Nino heating waters in the Pacific and wildfires and record temperatures sweeping the world, the United Nations is sounding the alarm. Climate change is here, it is terrifying, and it is just the beginning. The era of global warming has ended, the era, the era of global boiling has arrived. Some world leaders are moving to ease the symptoms of climate change. In the U.S., where around half the population is under a heat watch or warning, President Joe Biden pledged one billion U.S. dollars for tree planting. He also said that workers will be given protection for heat hazards on the job. I don't think anybody can deny the impact of climate change anymore. There used to be a lot of time when I first got here, a lot of people said, oh, it's not a problem. Well, I don't know anybody, I shouldn't say that. I don't know anybody who honestly believes climate change is not a serious problem. But back at the U.N., Secretary General Guterres wants to tackle the causes of climate change. He says the global financial system needs a change of course to do more about the climate faster. And he wants G20 countries to commit to even more stringent emissions cuts. Leaders must lead. No more hesitancy. No more excuses. No more waiting for the others to move first. There is simply no more time for that. So far, there's no sign of changes like these. Scientists say there will be consequences. We keep burning fossil fuels. We keep putting uh, carbon into the atmosphere, which warms the planet. On average, it does warm the planet by around about two tenth, tenths of uh, centigrade, which is 0.2 degrees centigrade per decade. <laughs> meaning the era of global boiling could be here to stay. Leon Lien and John Van Trieste for Taiwan Plus. French President Emmanuel Macron has denounced what he calls new imperialisms on a landmark visit to countries in the Pacific. His trip comes as China and the U.S. are vying for influence in the region. Il y a en Indo-Pacifique et tout particulièrement en Océanie de nouveaux impérialismes qui apparaissent et une logique de puissance qui vient menacer la souveraineté de nombreux États, les plus petits, souvent les plus fragiles. Macron was speaking in Vanuatu on Thursday. It marked the first time a French president has visited an independent Pacific nation. He said France plans to set aside about 220 million U.S. dollars for the Pacific over the next five years. On Friday, Macron arrived in Papua New Guinea and attended a traditional ceremony with Prime Minister James Marape. U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin was in Papua New Guinea the day before and said the U.S. was working to strengthen defense cooperation with the country. North Korea has staged a military parade featuring nuclear-capable missiles and new attack and spy drones. North Korean state media said the event showcased the country's latest intercontinental ballistic missiles believed to be able to strike the United States. Thursday evening's event marked the 70th anniversary of the armistice that ended fighting in the Korean War. The parade was attended by North Korean leader Kim Jong-un and visiting delegations from China and Russia. North Korea's nuclear missiles have been banned by the United Nations Security Council. U.S. President Biden and Italian Prime Minister Maloney have wrapped up talks in Washington, D.C. The two discussed trade, Italy's relationship with China, and Russia's war in Ukraine. Biden thanked Maloney for her country's steady support of Ukraine, and the two stressed the importance of stability between Taiwan and China. The two did not discuss LGBTQ issues, though. Rights groups say Maloney's group government has eroded LGBTQ freedoms in the country. Maloney is the head of Italy's first far-right government since the end of World War II. Coming up, we meet two young circus artists whose latest work is all about following your dreams. Stay tuned. This month's top hits on Taiwan Plus. Dab it out of the water. Hey. Join Leo, a Vancouver native, as he embarks on a captivating journey across Taiwan's fishing harbors. Happy Fisherman. 
的天哪！ Unlock the beauty of the Mandarin language as we delve into the fascinating stories behind familiar Chinese characters. Look at these beautiful squares. What's the word? Discover the captivating universe of Taiwan's artisans and unveil the innovative spirit that shapes this island. Craft Soul. I lived in Hong Kong until 2021. 喺香港讀藝術咁多年，受到好多政府嘅抨擊。The journeys of Hong Kongers who sought refuge in Taiwan, showing remarkable resilience. After that, Hong Kongers in Taiwan. Vibrant and original programs, exclusively on Taiwan Plus. For more stories about animals in Taiwan, follow Taiwan Plus on Facebook and Twitter, or download the Taiwan Plus app. In the face of adversity, the power of truth. A roadmap for a just and open world, charted by the freest country in Asia. Taiwan Plus. Taiwan Plus News, a voice of freedom in Asia. Welcome back. You're watching Taiwan Plus News. Taiwan's legislature has made it illegal for teachers to have relationships with underage students. Another amendment says, in relationships with adult students, teachers cannot use their positions to coerce students. The changes are to the Gender Equity Education Act, the first of three gender equality laws to be revised in response to Taiwan's Me Too movement. The others aim to fight sexual harassment in general and in the workplace. CMC has become the latest Taiwanese company to fall victim to cyber attack. Hackers targeted the car makers' systems with ransomware earlier this week. Several production lines had to be shut down, but have been brought back online. CMC says they're adjusting their schedule to make up for the delays. Analysts say Taiwanese companies face the highest rate of cyber attacks in the world, with thousands of attacks being reported every week. To find out more about these targeted cyber attacks and why they happen at such high rates, Harrell Hughes spoke to Jiang Yaqi, head of the Taiwan Law and Technology Association in Taipei. So Taiwan has the highest rate of cyber attacks in the world. Why is that? The number of the cyber attacks is increasing globally, so it is a global trend. And secondly, Taiwan is a high tech island, and everything is well connected to the internet, so it is as convenient. For the Taiwanese people to get access to the internet, as to the cyber criminals, and thirdly,、uh, Taiwan is facing severe threat from China. And according to the report, almost half of the cyber attacks annually、uh, is counted by is counted for China. What kind of patterns are we seeing with these cyber attacks? So the most obvious pattern we have seen so far is a high correlation between the political tension between the Taiwan and China, and the number of the cyber attacks. So nowadays, not only the political institutions, their websites are susceptible to the cyber attacks now, but also the private companies or other、uh, the websites of the critical infrastructures like the oil, our gas, our electricities. We've seen that Taiwanese companies, on average, receive up to three thousand cyber attacks per week.、Uh, what is the goal with that? Uh, there may be possible.、Uh, the possible goals may include, like first of all, to disrupt the operation of the companies, and so as to disturb the industry or the whole society, depending on the level of the cyber attacks. And the second primary goal might be、uh, to steal the business or the, 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 the trade secrets of the company, because now we know that China is eager to develop its own industry. That was Jiang Yaqi, head of the Taiwan Law and Technology Association in Taipei, speaking with our reporter Harrell Hughes. Archaeologists have uncovered what they think are ceramic shards from the Neolithic age in central Taipei. The shards could date back 3,000 years. Ordinary-looking red rocks, right? Wrong. Archaeologists say these are two massively important artifacts. It's a part of the artifact. The other fragment belongs to a stand for a pot. So the tao zi jiao 呢，就是它会有三只脚，三只脚。作用是什么？它上面可以放一个瓮
These two fragments are thought to be prehistoric finds originating from the Neolithic age. Workers discovered them while extracting Qing Dynasty drainage ditches in the center of Taipei. This area is rich with artifacts and has been the site of hundreds of historical finds. It's now a residential district, but used to be the outer wall of a prison. With so many pieces already found in the area, there's no telling what else is hiding just beneath the surface of Taipei City. Circus performers spend years honing their acrobatic skills before they can take the stage. But turning circus skills into a career nowadays can be extremely difficult. Two young circus performers in Taiwan are now working on a new performative art piece, which they hope will inspire others to follow their dreams. Yu Jing Huang has the story. <laughs> Using a simple everyday object to convey powerful emotions, this poetic depiction of first love is being displayed through the art of head manipulation. It's the work of artist Yang Shihao and its latest effort showcasing how emotive and artistic circus performances can be. Yang is best known for his serial performances in Europe. He later went on to showcase his skills on Asia's Got Talent. But in this new work, Yang aims to return to his roots, displaying his acrobatic evolution over the past decade. And ahead was the first object he started performing with. A 30-year-old, Yang works with artist Huang Yi, who is a decade younger. Together, they aim to reflect on their journeys as artists from different generations. To Yang, Working with Huang has given him many new ideas. Whereas Yang has performed in various high-profile events, Huang Yi is just starting out. But even then, his performance at the prestigious Colgate Theatre comes with a decade of practice on the Diablo, which he took up when he was 10. As Wang tries to find his feet in the performance world, Yang sees a lot of himself in the younger artist. Oh, both are pursuing their dreams, even though artists like them often struggle to make a living. But they are still going, and still working on enhancing their forms of artistic expression. They hope that through leading by example, they will go on to inspire more people and encourage others to never give up on their dreams. Devon Tsai and Yu Jin Huang for Taiwan Plus. Hundreds of thousands of comic fans are descending on Taipei over the next few days as the capital hosts Taiwan's largest comics exhibition. And as Ed Moon reports, this year local Taiwanese comics are increasingly taking center stage. Comics and animation are big business, bringing in billions of dollars around the world every year. And Taiwanese consumers particularly love Japanese animation. That's why today at the Taipei Comics Exhibition, featuring some of Japan's biggest series, they're bringing in hundreds of thousands of visitors every day. Taiwan is the third biggest market for Japanese comics, behind only the US and South Korea. And whether it's action, comedy, or a bit of boys' love, there's something for everyone. But local Taiwanese comics are starting to make their mark on the industry. While Taiwan has yet to produce a series that can match the global success of One Piece, Local comics are already spawning live-action movie tie-ins, and there's plenty more room for growth in the years to come. In 2022, the global comic book market was worth 15.5 billion US dollars. It's expected to reach 26.9 billion in the next decade. Taiwanese publishers are hoping to grab a slice of that market.
我们现场为我们台湾原创的 IP 展示了各种不同的面向，我们帮他发展不同的周边啊，不同的很多的不同的展示方式嘛。那对于前往国际这件事情呢，我们是希望未来有这样的机会的。If the Japanese comics industry is a well-oiled machine, then Taiwan's is only just getting started. And for fans, more choice is always a good thing. No matter what series they like or who their favorite character is, one thing is for certain: people here really love their comics. Klein Wang, Sam Hui, and Ed Moon in Taipei for Taiwan Plus. In the world of sports, Taiwan's women's basketball team has won their first game at the World University Games, also known as Chengdu University. Ed. Team Taiwan bested their Czech Republic rivals 81 to 75 in Friday morning's match. The 12 players have developed a playing style that's focused more on speed and agility. They've won silver at the World University Ad in the past and are now hoping to come out on top this year. Divers have spotted a rare oarfish in the waters off Reifang in northeastern Taiwan. This two and a half meter long specimen let the divers swim alongside it for about 15 minutes. Oarfish live deep below the surface and it's uncommon to see live ones. The divers think this one may have been in shallower water because of its injuries, which you can clearly see on the screen. Experts say the holes in its body may have come from shark bites. Thank you for watching Taiwan Plus News. Remember to download the Taiwan Plus app for more stories from Taiwan and around the world. Finally, today we leave you with images of endangered tiger cubs at London Zoo. Having a great time. I'm Leslie Liao. Take care and see you next time.